Jesse Smollett's conviction Thursday for lying to police about a racist, homophobic, anti-white slurs, folks. We never say either of those. Uh, attack came nearly three years after his report of a horrifying hate crime hoax. I added the hoax part because Babylon, the author here, would not have done that. Quickly became part of a polarized political landscape. Wonder why? Wonder why? With people, you know, it's it's not just white people are trying to just kill me and and every all of us poor's whatever. You all you know the anti-white narrative, so that's how this goes down. A political land, polarized political landscape with people, including the president of the United States, weighing in from all over. A prosecutor said. The verdict was, a quote, a resounding message by the jury that Mr. Smollett did exactly what we said he did. Recruit two brothers to fake an attack so it could be recorded by a surveillance camera and posted on social media for publicity. No, that's not why he did it. That's not why he did it. He had, there were two personal objectives for him. And this is how anti-whiteism always works. There's the anti-white objective. There's nothing more pleasurable to an anti-white. And clearly Jesse is an anti-white with his small et. Uh, he is a, he's anti-white as all get out, as we say down home. He's serving that bloodlust. Uh, and then he's also potentially, the claim being made, that he wanted to get back uh, on his uh, the TV show that where he had been, I guess, ousted or they had killed his character off or whatever it was. And uh, so what better way to potentially get back on his TV show than to satisfy his anti-white bloodlust? He committed a hate crime against the entire white race. Talking about a noose, I've talked about this before, when that general, that Air Force general, who, who should have his stars revoked and maybe beat into shackles to go around his wrists so he can live the rest of his life in the brig. When he came out and he lectured everybody, he pontificated about how this, uh, this sort of behavior isn't going to be allowed in the Air Force. And then, of course, we said it was a hate hoax, and it ended up being a hate hoax. Some objectionable, maybe racial epithet or whatever it was that was scrawled onto a wall or a door or whatever. So when you do that, and I said back, I said when I made that video that every time there is a hate hoax, you draw the noose of suspicion around the throats of all white people. You make a victim of every single white person, of every single white child. So if it is a hate crime, to attack a non-white person and think in the midst of the attack that think, I guess, I guess think at all about their race or their religion or whatever other groups have been. There are many groups, I guess, that have been included in this now. Think about all of those groups. If that's a hate crime against one person, what is it when it's an entire race of people that you're committing the crime against? And that is what Small Et did. You create a fictitious story that victimizes and demonizes an entire race of people, including their children, who have to live with having to make up for this, this, this attack their, their whole lives. And how many white girls would end up making up for that attack on their backs? You, you, you commit that crime. The police scour the city, not two dozen of them. I'm guessing there were more. So that's all of that. Uh, and then you have, I guess you could almost call it opportunity costs. Other crimes that weren't being uh, investigated, other crimes happening because the police were not on their beat, because they were looking for these two white guys. The cost of the manpower. Yeah, I said manpower. Chew on it, bitches. All of that. And all he's charged with is disorderly conduct. So it says he'll appeal the conviction and is 100% confident his name will be cleared by an appellate court. Unfortunately, quote, unfortunately, we are facing an uphill battle. 
where Jesse was already tried and convicted in the media. What Bravo Sierra. These people are the most dishonest bastards you'll ever meet. And then we had to somehow get the jury to forget or unsee all the news stories they had been hearing that were negative for the last three years, Uche told reporters after the verdict. Look, they're, they're talking about this as though now losing your livelihood, when it comes to anti-whites, white or non-white, losing your livelihood is, is worse than drawn and quartered. But when they do it to us, it's no big deal. All you did was lose your job. All you Now you just have to go get another job. All you did was lose your health insurance that you've worked for. All you did was lose the career that you've been building and climbing the ladder in. All you did was lose the thing you went to school or training or journeymanship or whatever it might be for. All you did was lose that. All you did was lose the industry that you won't be able to work in anymore. All you did was lose the groceries that you won't be able to pay for anymore and the car you won't be able to pay for anymore and the house mortgage you won't be able to pay for anymore. All you did was lose that. Stop crying. White people have it so hard. But when you take a rich actor who did nothing but pretend for a living and you undermine his career the slight, or potentially, it could by some strange, you could, you could angle it. It wasn't his doing. He doesn't have any agency. He's not responsible for what happened to him. No, it's because of the white people who didn't believe him. That's the problem. That's what Babylon, the author here from the Associated Press, is trying to get across to you by sharing that little, that little bit there from Jesse. I've lost my livelihood. Good. Good. Just like you all say to us, you're not dealing with a conservative or a Republican in me. I got a set. Let me tell you what. And my response is, good, SOB. I hope we get to find you out on the streets of Chicago doing your little tap dance. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Smollett.